I am so excited about this episode that I am letting you hear from a Instagram live that I did about is it time to start a podcast in the world of evolving AI and social media algorithms being all different kind of ways and all different kind of changes. Something that I have always seen a return of investment and energy from is having a podcast that has converted over 35% of my guests into dream clients that I have loved working with and amazing advocates and collaborators who have literally changed the face of my business and has allowed me to leverage my strengths as well as leverage my ability to be on other people's stages and in rooms where I have never been invited in, but because of my connection, because of my podcast, my name is being said in rooms that I wouldn't be able to go in. (laughs) So I'm so excited for you to listen to this IG Live that I recorded a couple of weeks back. This episode is gonna help you see like five reasons why you should consider having a podcast, especially now and where we are in the marketing world, also in the financial economy where we are and how it is actually super durable for all my chronic illness warriors. It's literally the thing that I've always done and has been the most transformative in my healing journey, as well as in having clients that pay me and clients that I love and people that I just have genuine connections with because of a real authentic connection. You're going to learn more about this on this episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to She's Crafted to Thrive, a globally ranked podcast for women living with chronic illness and creatives in business. I'm your host, Nikita Williams, chronic illness warrior and photographer turned digital marketer turned award winning coach. I love helping chronic illness warriors and creatives to live with their chronic illness and creativity as their superpower in life and business. On the show, you will hear the very stories that helped our guests, my clients, and myself to define our dream way of making money with proven strategies and marketing and mindset, all to grow a business that thrives without sacrificing our health. So stay tuned because you'll find the inspiration and tools and the resources you need to craft a life and business that thrives. Hello, welcome to today. I am talking about podcasting. I am a globally ranked podcast host. I've had a podcast since 20, 2017, and I have had over 100 episodes that are live and airing, and I love it. And I can't wait to share a little bit more about it with you in this journey. I am here to show you how to grow your business with more ease. And today I'm talking about how to do this with a podcast. And is it time to start one? (laughs) Is it time to, is it time for a podcast? It's the question that I keep asking, I keep hearing people ask me about is like, is it time, Nikita, for me to start a podcast? And The answer to that question is yes, it's always time to start a podcast. But before I go into that, let me share a little bit about why you might think it's a great time, why it's important to start doing that now. Let me get my headphones set. Thought I had them set a second ago. If you're joining me here, you can hear me live. All right. So is it time for a podcast? You all, first and foremost, let me tell you, there's no easier time to start a podcast than now. If you have been contemplating and thinking about, do I want to start a podcast? Is this going to be easier for me while I'm growing and growing my business and doing all that jazz? How can I get clients without social media? If you want to make social media optional, if you want to feel more at ease when you take like a week or two or a vacation off with content that's going to serve you for more than 24 hours or as long as the algorithm of social media is happening, then this this like live episode is for you. So some of the questions that I have constantly gotten from like some of my clients 
And those of you who have like thought about starting a podcast is like, it seems like it's only for people who have already a large audience or has a very specific niche that makes them more likely to be successful. And personally, I didn't know anything about a podcast when I started my podcast. And I'm so thankful I didn't have any of those thoughts or other people telling me those thoughts because it could have gotten in the way of me starting my globally ranked podcast show where I have found so much clarity and confidence, not only in my story, but have built an amazing support system and network through the show as well as finding clients through the show. So is it time for a podcast? The question is, or the question of the answer to that question is, I believe there's always time. It's always time for a podcast. Hey, Janine, how are you? Your niche and you. Hello, Jenny. I think that's right, right? Podcasting to me has been the most transformative part of my business and the most, um, versatile repurposing content in the world that's continually to change as far as marketing your business. A lot of people are talking about AI and how that's changing the face of how we market, how we create content. And the thing that I feel like as far as podcasting, hey, Shaylee, is that in a world that's becoming more digitally kind of created and manufactured and all of that jazz, the more and more we're going to want true connection with other human beings. Like the more we want to feel and understand what it is that we are providing. And to me, a podcast does that for you, whether it's audio only or whether that's audio and video, podcasts can look a lot of different ways. What I will say is that podcasting gives a lot of spoonies, a lot of women living with chronic illness and limited spoons and energy who have been going through lots of different challenges and being able to show up in a, in a way that feels really natural and easy for them to create content and service is through a podcast. And I, I want to start this, like not start this, I want to share it with you why I believe this is to be true. I have been on Instagram for, <laughs> let's just say it's a long time. It's been at least more than eight years, right? And I am just breaching the 2,500 follower list, right? For a while there, I felt like I would never hit a thousand for a very long time. But for my podcast, I have over 20,000 downloads. 20,000 downloads, y'all. And I have at least my, my clients, a lot of my clients, I would say about anywhere between 25 and 35% of my clients have come from something to do with my podcast. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is the reason why I started my podcast was for two reasons. I had just had my hysterectomy back in 2017 when I didn't know what to do with like life. And I was trying to find a way to have a better lifestyle living with endometriosis. And for me, I decided on a hysterectomy. But after I had the hysterectomy, I had some complications with some other chronic illness stuff. So I was stuck at home. Like I was not able to like go out and do my normal networking. And this was all before the pandemic. So I wasn't actually feeling like visibly ready to show up on camera for anything on Instagram lives as frequently because I, I was recovering from a really huge surgery. And also I went through a little, I call it post-traumatic hysterectomy. I had a huge depression after I had my hysterectomy. And so Trying to show up and like be a certain way on video or create posts is just was not going to work for me. It would have came off really forced. And if you know me and if you've been following me or if you're new here, I'm very much like a feel all of the things and do them authentically in the moment. I can't fake it. There's I don't know how to fake it till you make it. I just know how to be very intentional and authentic in how I did this. And so when I started my podcast, the only the way I used my the way I use social media in order to start and grow my podcast was very different than anyone else was really teaching. And when I started my podcast, I didn't know anything about podcasting. Honestly, my husband was the one who was like, hey, my husband was like, you know, instead of doing like writing blog posts, you could just start a podcast. And they're all like, what is that? And so it gave me a lot more freedom as far as creating long form content that was repurposeful. So this is this is why it might be time to start a podcast. If you want to have content that serves you more than 
whatever the algorithm weeks there are, if you want content that is much more purposeful and long form, if you want content that is searchable and SEO friendly, if you want content that helps you be seen, heard, and heard around the world besides what is happening locally in your corner of the Instagram world, And number five, if you want to have more flexibility and freedom of creating content from the comfort of your bed or your sofa with a heating pad and a blanket, it's time for a podcast. It's time for a podcast. All of five of those things are the things that help me start my podcast. And I actually think about podcasting a lot differently than a lot of people out there who are doing podcasts. They think about it as a main way for visibility. Is it helpful for that? Absolutely. Is it helpful for you to be seen as an authority in your industry? Absolutely. But I don't think starting a podcast to play the popularity game is really sustainable for the long term. And that's why for me, I use my podcast to be a platform for voices and clients that potentially were one, my ideal client, who may not have been seen and heard and not popular. And if I was going to have someone that was super popular, like when I had Jasmine Starr on my show or Julie Paisley, who's another amazing photographer, I had her on the show because of genuine connection, because also we were talking about the challenges of living and growing a sustainable business while dealing with a depression with Jasmine Starr, dealing with like identity and physical chronic illness. And so all of these things, hey, Diane. All of these things are my approach to starting a podcast. I know there are tons of coaches out there and there are lots of people teaching you how to like get the most famous brains and names on the show. But to me, I have always come from a place of connection and meaningful connections first to build a community of like-minded and also like feelings of problems kind of experience that also creates what I call your free champion sales team. And for me, my podcast became that vehicle for me, that the podcast for me became the vehicle that even though Nikita couldn't show up at a, you know, a networking event, even though Nikita wasn't at a live in-person event on Zoom, right? I knew that I was building this network of women who would send people to me and say my name in room because I featured their amazing stories and who they really were. They would say my name in another room where I could also serve those people without even being there. And to me, that is the power of a podcast. Okay, she was like, oh, snap, I never thought about these points. Yeah. And especially for like my clients and and, and the folks that have like service-based businesses, as well as like those spaces, I think it's even greater. It's the, to me, podcasting helps you to leverage the natural thing that human beings and especially, you know, women do well, which is to share things that they like, love, and the people they like and love. And it's a lot easier for someone to go like literally binge your content and connect with you than it is on an Instagram when they have to find you and like kind of scroll through all of this noise of everyone else that's being like hit at you. It's very different. So if you're looking for a way where your content one is just butter for your ideal client, it's butter for your guests, it's butter for you even in your worst day, a podcast is a thing to start. Like a podcast is a thing to start. And I will, I will say too, one of the things that I love about a podcast is that it helps you to like put yourself in other people's worlds, like by being a guest on other podcasts. That's something I really like to help my clients to figure out if they're going to start a podcast is not just like starting your podcast, but how to be guests on other people's podcasts in order to leverage their audiences in a way to give them the service and the value that you have for them that they may not be covering and so that they can cross pollinate. That's a lot easier to do in a podcasting world, I believe, than on like social media platforms. The other thing I love about this is like last, I've had two clients recently sign up with me because they heard something about me somewhere. I think one of them came from like a podcast episode that I recorded like a, like a year ago with someone else. They went to my podcast, binge like tons of content on my podcast, and they booked a call. And that happened, she told me like in a two week span. I'm sorry, that's faster than most people will do here on social media. And the reason why is because it is a true connection. Like my podcast, uh, my podcast content is very geared to my ideal client. It's very geared to the stories. It's very geared to my personal journey as a business owner living with chronic illness. And it's like, if you were to go back to episode one, 
you will see where I was kind of hiding, living with chronic illness. And then over the past, I would say since the pandemic, over the past, like since 2018, 2019, 2020, I started talking more and more about my journey and my story and how that's like affected how I show up in my business. And that has continued to help my podcast to grow and clients to come into my world. So is it time for a podcast? Absolutely. If you're thinking about it, what are you waiting for? It's funny. Let me tell you a little bit of a story of why I've kind of like didn't understand how powerful this tool was until I was talking to my email coach. So I work with an email coach because I started a podcast also partly because I hate, I don't really enjoy writing. It's not my favorite tool of like communicating with people. This is my favorite tool of communicating. Mm -hmm. Hence why a podcast. And also I like to go back and listen to my podcast to get more content for me to pull to repurpose for here. Um, That's a whole nother episode. I'm going to be talking about how you can repurpose podcast content for a whole nother social media feed. That's going to be another lie. I feel like I'd be more motivated to do a podcast than post on social media. Yeah. That's me every day. If I'm taking a break off of Instagram, even on my email, I'm, I I will still do a podcast episode, right? So what was I saying? Okay, so my email coach was having a conversation with me because I was having some mindset drama around like, my email isn't doing the way I want it to be. It's not converting as quickly. And she's like, I was like, it's so much, I'm not in like the energy of email. Like I have to like force myself into getting into like, an energy zone of writing email that feels very fire for me because it's just not the thing I'm most comfortable with. And so she asked me, where else do I feel that way where it's just natural comes to me? And I was like, my yes. And she said, well, you didn't start like converting within your first like episodes on your podcast. So like, just know it's going to take you some time with your email. And I actually had to be honest with her. It's like, actually, that's not true. Within my first 10 episodes, I think three of my clients, like three of the women I had on my show, ended up being clients. Okay, let me set it again. 10, I had like episodes of of interviewing other people, y'all. I was just interviewing these amazing women on my show. And within the first 10 episodes of doing something I have not had no clue about, three of those women who I just literally genuinely came to love them and like appreciate what they were doing and wanted to like shout them out and like, you know, praise them and give them a platform to be heard and hear more about their story. Three of those women of the 10 became my client in the first 10 episodes, which by the way, for a lot of episodes, a lot of podcast episode people, they don't get past the first 10. They don't get past the 10. Nevertheless, like there's like less than one, less than 0.5% of people actually complete a whole podcast, like a whole 20 episodes of podcast. They barely even get to 10. So at this point, I think I'm at 120 episodes. And I have really focused on quality over quantity. I focus on kind of persistence more than consistency with my podcast, but very open with my audience about like if I'm going to be taking a break or whatever. And they have so much on their content that's long form to binge on. I will sit, like, I can repurpose a lot of that content. I can take things that I do from here, like from Instagram. I can take, like, other podcast recordings that I did on other people's podcasts and move them over here to my podcast. To me, as time continues to grow and shift differently, grounded meaning says 100% agree about email energy. Yeah, it's hard, girl. It's a hard struggle. But my podcast is the thing that comes so easy. And so the reason why I have been like embracing this even more recently is because I understand that social media can be frustrating. Like, I'm not going to lie. Fr- like, I literally, I think last week, I think it's been two weeks that I haven't really posted anything, but I've created podcast episodes. I've sent some emails even, even though they're not my favorite thing to do, but I do send them. And so... My business has grown because of the content I usually produce outside of social media. And my audience, not just my audience, my community and the people who know what I do and why I do it and who I do it for are talking and saying my name in rooms when I'm in bed, right? When I'm in bed, like, I think that's the power of podcasts is that you really get to know your audience. Hey, Janafa, so good to see you. 
So I think it's so important to use tools in your business that allows you to leverage your strengths and your weaknesses. So for me, the podcast came at a perfect time where I was literally recovering from my surgery. I was literally, I was recovering from my hysterectomy. I was recovering from what I called earlier, like my post-traumatic hysterectomy depression. And I was still able to convert in my first 10 episodes, three clients while from bed, not using social media. How I leveraged social media was finding the women I wanted to elevate even more on my show and on my podcast. And like I wanted to feature them on my website. Those women came from me searching Instagram and really making genuine connection that I have a whole system and format for that's very different. So when people talk to me about like, I should start a podcast, I always ask them like, what is the reason behind starting the podcast? To me, that's very important as intention wise, especially if you want it to be a means for your business to grow. And I'm going to be honest, when I first started my when I first started my podcast, it wasn't about like clients. It really wasn't. It just happened like over the last year have I noticed like, oh, my gosh, a lot of these women who have had on the show end up being clients are great collaborators are great champions for me and what I do to bring other clients my way. And that's because I'm so intentional about the connection with the women that I have on the show and how I continue to develop and maintain those relationships. So there are the technical things that happen around podcasting, but I will say because of AI tools, starting a podcast is so much easier now than it's ever been, like way easier than when I started. And working with a coach who has done it all and can help you through all of that, like all of the techie stuff. I literally taught myself all of the things, editing, websites for it, SEO for it. Like I have learned all of those things. And also the most important piece, which is making that genuine connection and helping you figure out how to, one, get the guests you want on your show, right? How to tell your story in a way that doesn't feel like you're telling too much of your story. Like how do you decide what to say, what to share on the show. I teach you and I coach you around what, how you define that for yourself. Also, if you're thinking about using your podcast as a way to leverage speaking engagements, writing gigs, if you're looking to use to repurpose that content onto your social platform, if you're looking for that way for your podcast to be reused and repurposed like with video and clips and things like that. I have done it all for more than six years. More than six years. So what I like to say about podcasting is that it helps you leverage your energy and your time. You can get so much content within like a 15 or 30 minute podcast episode that can be repurposed for so many things. It can be repurposed for your website blog. It can be repurposed for your email. It can be repurposed for Instagram captions. It can be repurposed for video. It can be repurposed for an in-line person kind of giveaway that you give. You can curate series for them that you hand them a little, I wish I had my little thing for you, but there's so many different ways you can repurpose that content to serve your audience. And it can happen from your bed. It can happen with a heating pad. It can happen however you want it to happen without having the pressure of all of the things. The other thing that I love about podcasting, you all, is that once you produce it, it doesn't just live in one place, right? When we produce content on Instagram, it lives here on Instagram. And is it kind of searchable? Yes, it's kind of searchable, right? Certain parts of Instagram are searchable, but not as easily as this content that I'm doing right here. So it's not. But with a podcast, it is. And not only is it very searchable for people to find you, but it's also being delivered across 400 different platforms and certification of where your podcast will go. So you put it one place somewhere and it literally goes to three to 400 other places around the world. Talk about leveraging your time and your energy. Like it's, it's baffling to me that I thought, well, this is just my fun little thing on the side that I do for my business that I didn't really think and take advantage of how powerful it is. And now I have clients who like definitely want to learn more about how to incorporate podcasting, how to launch their podcast and attract their dream clients through it. That's what I can teach you to do and my one-on-one container. So obviously, if you want to coach with me and like work with me from a context of like learning how to deal with the mindset drama and limiting beliefs around starting a podcast, I can support you through that. 
you want to support around figuring out, is this really the tool I want to use in my business to help me grow it, help me to be found, seen, and heard? I will say every business that I currently work with will benefit from having a podcast. Yes, that's my photographers. I work with photographers. I work with nutritionists and herbalists. I work with coaches. I work with artists. Every single client that I have ever worked with could benefit from starting a podcast because of the beautiful multifacetedness of how it helps you to grow your audience, leveraging 300 other places that it goes to and those people that you're serving and their connection. What happens when you have people on your show is that they want to tell other people that they were on your show. And they also want to feel like I enjoyed that interaction with that person when I did it. So they're more open to sharing it. Also, there's this beautiful connection that happens when you have an interaction with another person that allows that genuine connection that's sometimes really challenging here on social media to do so much easier to actually create authentically when you're recording a podcast interview with a guest. I have a 30-day system and how I help, how I can help you to have the right kind of clients and have the ask be a no-brainer, yes, from them and a no-brainer, I cannot wait for them, right? Having that kind of system is really important. And so podcasting, if you're thinking, is it time? It's time. Even if you're a writer, right? Maybe you're like, girl, but I love to write. It's even more perfect for you. You can write your beautiful stuff that you want to say. You can script out your whole podcast episode. Then you could read it or say it however you want to on your podcast, record yourself. Then you have a recording of your words that you can then now use as clips, as graphics, as blog posts, SEO, um, show notes, all of these different kinds of things you can do. You can create videos from all this content. Podcasting is going to be the way that a lot of us now, a lot of us will want to see and hear because it helps us connect with our audience. So I'm going to read some statistics that I pulled up recently about how podcasts are so much more powerful at times than social media. They People are less distracted when they're listening to a podcast because they're listening to one voice, usually even though they're doing other things. How often are we here on social media and we're like driving, the kids are talking to us, and like then there's this ad that pops up, da, 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 all these weird things that interrupt our connection with the client, like with whoever we're talking with, right? A phone call even, right? Like all those things kind of happen here on Instagram. But 40, 54% of podcast listeners are more likely to consider buying from a brand after hearing them speak about it on a podcast. 54% people, 54%. So let me, t- let me break that down for you. And Instagram rules, okay? We are told constantly that less than 2% of our audience actually sees our content. Less than 2%, okay? So if I'm on, like, I have 2,500 followers right now, okay? 25. I know, I'm, I'm part of the 54. Exactly, Kelsey, exactly. I have 25 followers here on Instagram. So what is that? 2% of 2,000. Let's just say it's 20. Let's give that number. It's 20, 20%. 20% of you are actually seeing my content. But when I produce a podcast episode and I have well over a thousand followers, I know for a fact they will see that I just dropped a new podcast episode and that at least 54% of those people will listen and take action. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? But y'all hear what I'm saying? I consistently talk about how as chronic illness warriors who are running a business, energy is currency. Energy is currency of the greatest, like, greatest need for us in our businesses. So when you have a podcast that converts at those numbers, right? It helps things, it helps take the pressure off social media being the only way people find us right? It makes it easier to be like, oh, well, I can just repurpose my podcast information because this is like gravy on top of everything that's happening with the 54% that are listening to what I'm talking about on my podcast. And so I'm not going, I'm not going to lie to y'all right now. For, for a long time, I tried to 
ignore the awesomeness of podcasting as this little thing that I'm just like kind of doing. <laughs> like I enjoy it so much. I find it such I find it so easy. I enjoy connecting with women. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy having these conversations with women. And I cannot tell you how much healing happened and has happened for me just telling my story and reframing some of those false thoughts about my stories from having my podcast. And for a while, like I've, I have a good friend, my a good friend who's a coach here. Her name is Amy. She's an amazing trauma coach. And she was like, she asked me this earlier last year. She's like, why don't you just kind of like pivot a little bit into talking more about your podcast? And I was like, girl, that's just the thing that I like do on the side of my business. It's fun. But when my other email coach was like, Nikita, you you know, people want to just convert in a podcast episode, podcast, like from the first episodes, I'm like, I did in the second. Like in the second. And then, then the, 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 the fourth. And then, then the tenth. So then it, Within the first 10 episodes. And my 10th guest, y'all, was Jasmine Starr. So, like, to me, it's the thing that comes easy for me. And I know that it doesn't come easy for you or it may not come easy for you. There's mindset that comes up, like, what do I share? When do I do it? I don't like my voice. Like, how much content is that? Am I going to have to produce? How, what, what is all the tech that I'm going to need? How do I know whether or not it's connecting with my audience? All of those different kind of questions you're going to have. When when do I do this? Like, how do I edit it? What do you mean you can do a podcast from your bed with a heating pad? What? How do you repurpose that content if you're not showing your face? I know how to do it all. I've done it all. And I've done it all with the context and my thought of being like, oh, this is so easy. So easy that I dismissed it for a minute. Dismissed that it was such a powerful tool in my business and why it's actually really helped me grow my business to the way that it has and why I am in the top 5% of podcasts globally and why I find clients and champions that say my name in rooms when I'm not there. And if that's something you want, if you want to find some more ease in your business when it comes to marketing, you want to leverage the time you spend doing the marketing and the things that you're doing more efficiently so that your air, so that your energy turns into currency, call with me. I would love to work with you to learn how to launch your podcast and start attracting your dream clients and deal with all the mindset stuff that comes up and all the like other things that happen. Like how do you deal with the timing and the cadence in which you do it? And how do you really figure out a a way or message that you really want to be seen and heard? What is your mission? All of that stuff is really important when it comes to starting a podcast, specifically if you're doing it for your business. And I'm so passionate about it. I'm even more passionate about it because I realized, Nikita, you've been laying on this dream. Like, it's just happiness, me and the pillows and the clouds and everything's perfect. But it literally has been a thing that has helped my business to continue to grow when I have not been here on social media. When I have, when I didn't even have an email list, I was converting clients from a podcast. So podcasting, especially for my chronic illness warriors, this is the vehicle that without me realizing, has literally helped me to grow my business to where it is today. And through lots of different things, through a pandemic, through surgeries, through new chronic illness diagnosis, through depression, through so many different things. My podcast has always been the thing that has always worked in my favor for my business and for me. So I'd love to work with you. I would love to explore if this is a thought you've been like, grab and thinking about it starting a podcast, but I don't know. Is it for me? If you saw that question, is a podcast for me? Book a call with me and we'll talk about it. I'll tell you legitimately if it is or is it. If it's not, I will tell you because I do think it's not for everyone in the context of mindset, but I think most businesses, most business, businesses would benefit from podcasting like 100%. 100%. Any questions about podcasting? Jennifer said, you are killing me right now. Jennifer said, energy is so real. You got to maximize it. Exactly. Your advocate. Hello. Welcome. She says, I know I'm a part of 54%. Yeah. I mean, there are there are women that I followed on, on my podcast that I listen to. I'm not, you know, it's funny. I'm not like a huge podcast listener. I only listen to a handful of people. That's the other thing that's really cool about podcasting is that you know the numbers that are being downloaded. You know that the people that are actually engaging with your content, they are ride or dies. Okay. When I say they're ride or dies, there have been times in my podcast journey where I'm like, I'm going to take the summer off. Here are some, you're going to get replays of things I've done. And do I still get downloads? Yes. And it's because these are ride or die, like a community. Like they will be there. 
we don't like to, I think with audio, we don't like to overwhelm ourselves with like following like a thousand different people. That's not going to happen with podcast listeners. They will choose who is going to be in their ear. And that's why I love podcasting. Like, that's why I feel like one of the most important things if you're starting a podcast is to really decide on like, what story are you going to like share? And what person are you going to serve that needs a voice? And for me, that was chronic illness business owners, like women that were living with chronic illness that felt like they had to be perfect. And even people who thought like they had to hustle their way through. Like, I want real conversations about resources and tools and stories about doing a business living with chronic illness. And how that looks like from a woman's perspective, right? And how that looks like from different varying aspects of business. I've had women from, um, women from like who are jewelry, who are, who are, you know, CEOs of companies. I have had, I've had so many women, I came to think, I've had travel agents. I've had so many women, but the thing we have all in common is something they do with chronic illness and creativity. And that is our lane, right? And so... We're highly selective when we listen to podcasts exactly, Geneva, because if we're going to spend 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 45 minutes to listen to somebody, we're not doing that with like a thousand people. We're doing that with the people who we feel like serve our cup and fill it, right? And so that's why I think there's the other awesome thing about podcasting. And you will never, to me and my thought, you will never have to worry about AI taking over your voice. People are still going to want to hear our voices, regardless of how awesome AI is. They still want to hear that we are humans, that we have challenges, that we have mistakes, that we have overcome. They will still hear, want to hear your voice. Okay. They will still want to connect with a human. And that is the power of podcasting. So if with the AI role, I feel like I was telling my husband this the other night. I'm like, with the AI, there are so many tools that actually help you create better podcasts with AI to help you edit and create, repurpose that content even more efficiently with AI. But what you will not have to worry about is AI replacing your voice to be like something else. Like people will want to connect with you and your stories and your community. And that is another reason why it is time for you to start a podcast, right? And connections, like people buy from people, people connect with people, even with big businesses and corporations. And that's the thing we're going to need as we continue to grow our businesses and do it in a way that feels really good, that can be done from bed with a heating pad. Legit, right? So I'd love to support you to decide whether or not a podcast is for you in your chronic illness entrepreneur journey. Or if you've been thinking about it or it's on your list and you've got a list of people you would love to have on your show. I, I was talking to one of my clients and she was like, girl, I have topics and I have people that I want to have on my show already. And I'm like, what? And I was like, what's holding you back? It's mindset. It's the tech. And I can help, I can help you with all of those things. So book a call with me just to discover if, if, if you should start it. How could it look? How could it help you attract your client? What I will teach you as a coach around converting your guests into clients, it alone is not being taught. I believe I'm the only coach or the only person really talking about how to do this from the context of like genuine connections lead to clients who are on your podcast who will say yes and will still shout you out from the rooftop. Not salesy, not weird. It's genuine, heartfelt connection to serve your ideal client. So I'm really excited about this. This quarter two, I'm going to be talking a lot more about podcasting. <laughs> And helping my clients, whether that is start with a podcast. Some of you are like, girl, I don't want to start a podcast. I want to stay on Instagram. I can support you in there. But I definitely would ask you, like, have you considered a podcast? It could be the thing that gives you the freedom and the flexibility that you want and sustainability and profitability for your business living with chronic illness. All right, loves, I hope you enjoyed this. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. Thank you for listening. And I hope this conversation inspired you. Be sure to visit the website at craftedtothrive.com to check out the show notes and grab all the goodies that I or the guests mentioned in the show. Join us for our next one. In the meantime, remember you are crafted to thrive.